G'day folks, it's Phil from 15 Minute Guitar Practice here bringing you the solo to a great track, The Doctor by the Doobie Brothers. Now, if you want to skip ahead to the teaching, then go right ahead, but I've got a few things to say about this track. Firstly, I remember exactly where I was when I first heard this song. I was in my bedroom, I was listening to the radio, and I did, at that point, do what every kid who heard a cool song on the radio did. I scrambled for a blank cassette tape, you might have to Google that, and hit record. And I remember thinking, this is just awesome. This is an awesome riff and the solo, it's so majestic and joyous and just uplifting. Now, at that point, I've been playing electric guitar for about six months. I had been playing acoustic guitar for a few years before that, just kind of open chords and strumming and songs but um, I was in my first year of really getting into the rock and roll side of things. And I couldn't understand why the things I've been doing with the minor pentatonic and the couple of licks I've managed to put together, while my stuff didn't sound like this Doobie Brothers solo. Well, the answer is because the Doobie Brothers solo is mainly major pentatonic and major scale notes, which gives it that kind of positive, uplifting, majestic kind of feel. And also there's some great bends and some, just some great timing in this solo that really uh, I remember learning it by ear because that was the only way to figure stuff out back in those days. And I remember calling my mum into the room and saying, Mum, listen to this solo. Isn't it the most awesome thing you've ever heard? And, um, and I played it to her. Now, I don't know whether my performance was the best thing she'd ever heard at that point. <laughs> Um, but it gave, it gave me a deep sense of joy. All right, the year was 1989, so I was uh, 16 years old, and this meant a lot to me, uh, mainly because I did what every other person needed to do when they wanted to figure something out in 1989, and that was to learn it by ear, um, note by note, with the cassette player and a pause button, pause it, sing the note, find it on your fretboard, press stop, rewind it like half a second, press play, listen to the first note and the second note, press pause, find it on your fretboard and repeat until you're done. Now what struck me about this solo was the fact it was manageable for me to play, it wasn't too technically difficult um, and it was short, <laughs> you know, when you're doing that kind of note by note, learning by ear, um, a shorter solo is 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 good because it's it's mercy because it takes so long. So it was technically something I could do um, both with my fingers and with my ear. So let's take a look at what we're gonna do. Okay, first things first, you're gonna need to tune down half a step. So your bottom E string is now tuned to E flat, A string to A flat, etc. etc. Okay, so the opening of this solo starts with a major pentatonic phrase on the 11th fret of the D string, and it sounds like this. Okay, so we're sliding in from, I don't know, maybe the 9th fret of the D, sliding up to 11D. Playing 9 on the G string twice. Back to 11D. Then we do two whole tone bends at the 11th fret of the G in quick succession. One to short one. And then the next one is the long one that we hold. We hold that for a while and then we release and then play 9G and 7G. Notice I'm playing both of those with my first finger. And the timing is that the phrase comes in on the three. So one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Okay, so we hold that bend for quite a long time. We release it and play the um, nine on the G and the seven on the G on the and after four and the one. Okay, so that's our first phrase. Okay. 
then we kick off into the solo properly. Okay, and again, it starts with a slide in, and we're sliding in on the G string to the 13th fret. Playing 12B, and playing two hits of 12 top E. Then we're leaving a slight gap before making a bend at the 15th fret of the B string. And that's a whole tone bend, so. Next up we have this lick. Now this is probably the trickiest technical part of this lick, is getting all those notes in and also getting to the next lick without flubbing any of those notes, including the first note of the next lick I'm gonna show you. Um, but this lick is basically, after we've played that full tone bend at the 15th fret, we stop it from ringing. I'm actually stopping it with my pick by bringing my pick onto the string, then release that. So 15, pulling off to 12 on the B, and then 12 pulling off, sorry, 14 pulling off to 12 on G. Then hammering on to 13 on G. And then 14 D and 14 on the A. So slowly that'll be. Okay, so just a bit of advice about the placement of that last note. I'm playing it with my second finger. And when I'm playing that, it's such a tiny amount of time before the, that note and the beginning of the next note that I actually start to move my hand, twist my wrist, because I'm aiming for here. I'm aiming for 16 on the top E. And it's not that far away from where I am now. It's only two frets, but in terms of where my fingers are now versus where my fingers need to be, it can be a bit of a challenge. So I'm twisting and then I'm dropping down and heading here. Okay, so our next phrase is Lovely little lick there. Okay, so we play 16, 17, 16, 17, and then bend 17 up while it's ringing a whole tone and release it. 16, 17 again, 16 on the E, Okay, then it's 17 on the B, and then it's 16 on the G. So slowly that will be. Next I think is my favorite bit of the lick. It just feels good. It's not particularly complicated, but it sounds good and it feels good. Okay, so what we're doing is pulling off from 14 to 12 on E and hitting 12 on the B string. We're playing that four times. Then we're reaching pinky over, or at least I am. You might want to do the third finger, but for me, that's, uh, that's not a very comfortable stretch. Okay, but whichever finger you decide to use, I'm placing it at 16 on the E, pulling off to 12, and then going to 12 again on the B string. So, four of those as well. So, all in all, we've got. And then we slide up from the, for the grand finale. We're sliding up here on the G string and it's like this. Okay, so what we're doing there was we're sliding up 15, 17, 19. So we're 19 on G. Then we're playing 17 B. Then 19 B and pulling off to 17 on B, then 18 on the G, then back to 17 on the B, 19, 
17 again on the B and up to 19 on the top E and finish with a full tone bend. Now I think the temptation is with this bend to immediately activate vibrato when you play it like. Okay, that's not how it was played. You can if you want, but if you want it kind of more authentic to how the original performance was, it doesn't actually add much vibrato. And when it does, it adds it much later on in the notes duration, so. Okay, so let's run through the whole thing quickly. I don't mean quickly, I mean at a slow tempo, but to recap the whole thing, here we go. Remember it starts on the three. One and two and three. Okay, so that was the solo from 1989. Uh, a really important emotional point in my guitar career and um, thank you for letting me share it with you. Hit subscribe if you'd like to see for more from me, leave a comment below and you can always grab the tab. I'll leave a link in the description. This is Phil from 15 Minute Guitar Practice saying bye for now. Cheers.